Hi, it's James Martell here, and welcome to session number four of the Daily Traffic Blueprint on page SEO. It's great to see uh, everyone getting logged into the conference room. I hope you're comfortable and looking forward to a very productive session. If you happen to be listening to this as a recording, a very special welcome to you as well. It's nice to have you with us. It's been great over the past week uh, chatting with those of you in the Facebook group as you've worked to get uh, the homework items complete, uh, including the Google authorship and Google publisher markups. Uh, good job on getting that done. I do know a few of you uh, had some struggles and uh, a number of you worked through it. Uh, others uh, had a chance to uh, review a new tutorial I added to the, uh, the session below uh, session number three. We've added a, uh, a new tutorial uh, for those of you who are using WordPress with a special plugin. Uh, I see uh, Karen uh, has joined us tonight. Good to see you, Karen. And she says it uh, has not been approved to join the Facebook group. I'll make sure uh, you get added to that uh, as soon as we are done the session tonight. And uh, on that topic, for those of you, of course, who are members of the school, you're more than welcome to join us in the private Facebook group. And uh, by all means, do so. It's a great place to hang out, ask questions, work out problems, uh, assist others if you happen to know the uh, answer to uh, something they may be working on. And it's always uh, good to get a little encouragement along the way and to uh, also share your successes as things come together for you. Tonight we have a desired outcome, which is at the completion of this session, you will have selected a target page, identified your target keywords, checked and adjusted your on-page SEO, including your content, title tag and description meta tags, recorded social engagement and analytics, and compared it against a select competitor. And tonight's actually, I, I find this one of the most interesting topics, uh, especially in, in this uh, recent past since, uh, since Penguin has come along so strong, and uh, Panda as well. And I think you'll find that um, if you're new to the world of SEO, this should be pretty uh, interesting and enlightening for you because it really isn't rocket science. It's really not that complicated once you understand how the pieces all fit together. It's just a matter of uh, getting it all organized down on paper, and that's one of the goals of this session is to get this down into a plan for you so you can see where the traffic comes from and how it develops over time. Had a great chance to... Uh, to dig into uh, Carol's analytics, Carol Newman, of course, who uh, we're uh, working on her site, the BioGirl Health site. And really interesting to dig in, to have a look, and to uh, begin to identify so many opportunities. She's got one page that's had 60,000 page views over the past year. Another one is at 22,000. There's a number of them at, uh, you know, in and around those type of numbers. So it's a matter of, in those particular cases, truly working on increasing uh, increasing conversion one thing that one thing I should point out as well too some of uh, some people have a tendency to focus on analytics early on I'd highly recommend that you don't do that and you really focus in on the, this is for those of you who are just getting going I know we can pour through the reports a lot and we can kind of spend a lot of time in there but if we take Ken McCarthy who's uh, one of the you know the more famous uh, legitimate online marketers uh, he's got a little formula that I've really learned to embrace, and it basically is traffic plus conversion equals profit. So there's no point in focusing on conversion if we don't have any traffic. So where we want to begin, uh, and of course you guys have all understood that because you're here, the Daily Traffic Blueprint, the whole purpose of this course is to increase traffic uh, in a dramatic way. So just keep that in mind, though. If you find yourself pouring over your analytics and you're fretting over them and you really don't have much in the way of traffic, I would recommend until you're up to 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 visitors a day, don't even worry about it. Just build the traffic. Then when you're sitting at 100 visitors a day, now you've got 3,000 visitors in a month. Now you've got something to dig into and really start working on the, uh, the conversion rate. Last session, we covered off uh, selecting a social media profile. We set up Twitter, Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook. We organized the project for our cover art, and then we also went ahead and posted it at Elance. Uh, I don't actually have all of the cover art back as of yet, 
And it's because it's so simple and easy to upload, what I'll do is I'm just going to add a video to session number four here of uh, me actually adding the cover art to each of the uh, social networks. So uh, we won't cover that here for the sake of time. Very easy to do. Uh, just watch out for a video on that uh, in the coming days. Tonight, tonight's a good one. Baby step number one, select a target page. And this will be the page that you want to work on to get highly ranked in the results. We're going to focus on one page just for the sake of simplicity as far as presenting this. You can work on multiple t pages simultaneously, but just to keep this simple and easy to understand, we're going to, uh, we're going to really focus in on... Uh, putting a plan together to get one page highly ranked. And for many of you, especially those who live in the local world, who have a local business, maybe you're a chiropractor or a, a contractor or a, a lawyer, some type of small local business, or maybe not even small, but a local business who's looking at uh, attracting a local audience, in a lot of cases, you're only going to need to probably more than likely optimize one, two, or three, four pages to really be able to cover off your community. Baby step number three is we're going to dig into, uh, after we have identified your target keywords, we're going to look at your on-page SEO for your rankings and your content and your title tag, your description meta tag. We're going to have a look at the social engagement of that particular page. We're going to look at the analytics for that particular page. So this is all focused on a single page of content on your website. And then we're going to identify a competitor, somebody who's already ranked in the top of the results where you'd like to be, and we're going to do a little comparison between the pages to see where they are with their rankings and where you are in your rankings, and we're going to put a plan together based on what we see in the actual results. Before we do that, though, let's, uh, let's just go through a little bit of the basics. Many of you, uh, uh, this is old hat for, uh, for a lot of you, but uh, for, it's probably very good to review it because there has been so many changes to the way Google is displaying the SERPs. And SERPs is uh, simply a four-letter acronym for Search Engine Results Pages. And it's, we're going to have a look at the, you know, the results page itself. It's, of course, a lot different than it used to be when we got started. Early on, all it was was basic natural search listings. There was no map in the right. There was no local results, as you see below. It was just a page of content with just results. They were all basically the same, and there wasn't what we, have, what we now call blended results. So it's important, though, to have a look at what we've got here. So, of course, there's the paid ad at the top, and you can see that by the, uh, the little color in behind it. That's where you can see that it, it's paid. Below that, we've got a couple of natural search listings. So we usually get paid at the top, followed by natural. And then the recent over the last few years is they've introduced local. Which, and they've morphed these a few times as Google tries to find its way in the best way to, to display these, uh, these listings. So really, though, there's, those are the three primary, primary uh, listings on the page. We've got paid, we've got natural, and we've got local. Paid, of course, is uh, time to pull out the credit card if you want to rank uh, and compete for those top spots. And in a lot of cases, extremely expensive these days, highly competitive. But if you're in a local market and you want to do a little, you don't mind paying a little bit to get some top rankings, you may want to consider doing that. It's uh, not within the scope of this course. And uh, Google's happy to uh, answer the phone when you have your credit card in your hand, so they'll help you uh, get the listing set up. And we do have a course plan for the school, but uh, for this session, uh, we're going to stick with the natural and the, uh, the listings that we can earn through optimization and just doing a really good job on our content. So with this in mind, you're going to find that uh, the top 10 rankings are really important and really if you break it down and we have a look at Google's click-through rate, if you study this little pie chart here, you, I think you're going to be amazed at what you see. And essentially this is Google's click-through rate of the top 10 search results or the top 10 search rankings. So, and this is who's getting the clicks. So if you happen to be in the number eight position on Google, and you're wondering why you're seeing such low traffic, even though you're on page one, it's because you're only getting approximately 3.5% of the click-throughs click coming from those top 10 rankings. 
or if you happen to be in the number six position, which seems to be pretty close to the top, you're still only getting 4.1% of the click-throughs, of the total click-throughs that people uh, are, are giving as a result of landing on that particular search result page after doing a search. And this is, a, is a, of course, according to Optify.net, and you can check this out anytime, and they do, uh, they do monitor this. You can see if you happen to be in, in the number 10 spot, you're at 2.2%, so you're really not getting a lot of traffic. If uh, you're at 3.8% in the number 7 position, and you can actually work your way up from number 7 to number 1, you're sitting at almost a 10 times increase in traffic just by moving from position number 7 in the results up to position number 1. I'm going to give you some examples of some stuff that we've done recently just in, in exactly this area shortly here. But you can see, if you're sitting down towards the bottom of the top 10 results, you're really not where you need to be these days. You need to work on getting into the position 1, 2, or 3, or preferably position 1, 2, and 3, which we'll talk about how to do that uh, as we go through. And we're going to be sharing some ideas with you over these next couple of sessions that I think many of you haven't really tackled yet. We just started it recently, and it kind of came to me not too long ago. I was like, well, what am I doing? i got a good idea for this. And so we've actually tested it, and it's working great. So I'll share that with you tonight. But you can see, number one, 36.4% of the traffic. Number two, 12%. Number three, almost 10. You add that up, you're at uh, 36 plus 12 is 48, plus uh, almost 49, plus almost 10. So almost 60% of the traffic is going to the top three positions. So it's important that we get into, uh, into the top spots. So you can see this area here, this happens to be a little search. Uh, this is actually in a little community called Placer, California. And there's the results. Very interesting, though. You can see the sweet spot. Those are the one, two, and three. I ignore the paid results. And the natural results get far more clicks than the paid, so I just kind of ignore them at this point. I don't usually pay for, for rankings. If we can earn them, we might as well. But you can see, obviously, that's the sweet spot. That's where we want to be, number one, number two, and number three. Something that we've talked about for, for many, many years, as we've been training on this uh, since 2002, is Google doesn't rank pages. Google ranks, uh, sorry, Google doesn't rank websites. Google ranks pages. So don't be thinking about my website's not ranking. You want to be thinking which page on my website isn't ranking and for what keyword phrases. And if we think pages, not sites, uh, then you've got a real fighting chance to win your way to the top of the results. And this is more important than ever today than, it, uh, than it's ever been, as you'll, you'll see in just a moment here. You can see here, uh, here's, another, here's that same search for Placerville CA Chiropractor. You can see something very interesting here. We now have this, this area called blended search results, and this is why it's so important to be thinking pages and not sites, because some of you, with, with very minimal effort, should be able to obtain top rankings with, uh, you know, with, with the strategy I'm going to share with you tonight. So you can see the number one position here is Yelp. So Yelp is in number one. In this particular case, uh, Facebook is number two. And then your website might be down the list three, four, five below that. But don't think of Yelp as not yours. If you've got a page on Yelp, and we're going to teach you how to get set up on Yelp and the various uh, other directories, that, legitimate directories that you can get your websites and your businesses into, uh, there's no reason at all that you can't have your, your Yelp listing top of the list or your Facebook listing page one, two, or three, or page one, position one, two, or three. And we'll, I'll give you some examples of this shortly, but think pages, not sites. And this is so important because many of you already have listings in the yellow pages, listings in Yelp, listings in super pages, listings in all kinds of these reputable directories. And it doesn't matter if you're local search or if you're going after a more national audience. There's directories out there that are highly reputable that you can get listed in and that you can work on getting those pages highly ranked in the results. Let me, let me throw out a question, if, uh, if I could, to everyone. With your particular website, how many of those top 10 search positions can you possibly earn with your site? 
typically. Once in a while, you'll see an anomaly where there'll be maybe more than the norm. But what's the normal number of, of pages from your website that you could see in the search results for a particular given keyword phrase? Anybody care to throw out a number on that? Let's get those fingers nimbled up. Robert says two. Uh, Bob says five. Jose says one. Uh, Joan says five. The answer is actually typically one. If you're really good, two. You can get two of your pages ranked out of those top ten results, which still leaves another eight positions in the results. Uh, you take a look at Wendy says three, Bob says five, and Joan says five, and that's not wrong because once in a while you'll see that you can get many more, but it's it's not the norm. It's 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 usually one, typically one or two. So with that in mind, if we've got a website and we've we've done the best we can, we've got two positions, that still leaves eight other spots in the results. And if you're working on a really good keyword phrase or a grouping of keywords that you'd like to see highly ranked in the results, then that's the time where we can start to look to Yelp because Yelp's a highly reputable directory and with a few little tweaks and some work on that page and some of the stuff that we'll cover, you can see your pages ranking uh, highly in the results on, on some of these other pages and you control those pages. So remember, think pages, don't think so much about your website. Okay, so, and keep in mind a whopping 60% of the click-throughs go to the first three spots. So we're, we want to be in the sweet spot, whether we are working on a local market or whether we're working on a national market. The natural search results, of course, we pay zero cents per click. So once we've earned our position at the top of the list, we don't pay anything to be there. And I was doing some, some research on, on AdWords uh, early this morning and you would be amazed if you haven't done any AdWords advertising, what people are paying per click. It could be 50 cents, 75 cents, it can be 25 bucks a click depending on the topic. With natural, you don't, uh, of course, you don't have to pay for that, you just have to earn your position. The local results, same thing, you can't buy these, these rankings, you have to earn your way up through good optimization and great content and following uh, Google's uh, webmaster guidelines. And you can see that uh, there's lots of room in there. Typically, there's five, six, seven spots, depending on how big the market is. Uh, sometimes if it's a small market, you only see two or three. But definitely, they're on page one, and we want to be on page one. Quick little case study of something that we've just been working on. In fact, we're in the middle of it still right now as we go. But this idea of getting multiple pages to rank in the results. This is something that we've just completed, and you can see here is a keyword search for personal injury chiropractor, Placerville. And if you take a look at that, think pages, not websites, YouTube, these are his three YouTube videos, position one, position two, position three, and then there's a local result, which happens to be the doctor as well in uh, position number four. So out of the, uh, the, the the top four spots, he's position one, two, three, and four. So if you think back to that sweet spot, pretty much got that covered. If we scroll down the page a little bit, there's his Facebook listing. So now we've got five out of the five out of the ten. There's his Angie's list listing. Now we've got six out of the ten. And you'll notice if you click on those links, it takes you right to his page, which has been claimed he has control of this page. He can add the content to it. It's got his address there. It's got his phone number there. It's got a link to his website. And it's sitting on a very reputable, highly trusted website called Angie's List. And of course, if you're in the US, it's one of the, one of the places you more than likely want to be depending on the type of business you have. So think pages, not websites. One of the, one of the uh, uh, exercises you're going to want to do, and one of the things that we will be doing as we start building citations and reviews, is looking at all of these types of pages that we can go out and find that you may be already listed on. It's amazing how many of you are probably already on some of these pages. The, the, uh, these directories have scooped you up from somewhere and published you in your list. It's just a matter of taking control of that listing, claiming it, and then adding your own description, adding your own address, phone number, link to your website. Some of them will let you up upload photos, videos, all kinds of stuff. You can really optimize these pages. And then what we do is we get them a few little backlinks, and next thing you know, because it's a highly trusted, reputable website in Google's eyes, 
with just a little bit of optimization, these pages do start popping onto page one. So out of the out of the uh, ten listings, not including the, the paid, out of the ten natural listings, uh, in this particular case, the doctor's got control of six of them so far. So with this in mind, we have the on-page SEO checklist, and there's a couple of documents that I want to share with you. This one we've already shared with you, but I've I've uh, also included it in, in this lesson if you don't have it, because I do believe to win this over, it starts by understanding, and I, I do know sometimes I'm working with uh, some people who have the mindset is, you know, I don't really understand it, I don't really have the time to think about it, I just want it to get done. It can work like that. We've got to understand how this works. Even if you're going to get somebody else to do it, or especially I would think if you're going to get somebody else to do it for you, because... Uh, otherwise, you just can get ripped off, and I've seen more people get ripped off in the SEO world than probably any other type of um, you know area that you could delve into. So it really does. It starts by understanding. So this checklist uh, also includes a three or four page article at the back of it. I would highly recommend that you download it, you print it, put it in a binder. In fact, you should all. I would recommend all of you get a binder and a three hole punch, and then print these and put them in the binder. Mark them up. You really want to internalize this information. It'll make every difference to your business uh, uh, than you can imagine just because you have the knowledge. So don't kind of skim over this stuff. This is, we're talking about traffic building. Traffic, the right traffic can change everything. So there's the on-page checklist, on-page SEO checklist. And then I put together a little on-page SEO workbook for you. And this will take you through the eight baby steps I'm going to take you through right now uh, and let you mark it up in the book. So put this in the same binder, get a pen, and then just work on it. I, I, I recommend using a pen and paper with this one because you're going to have a printed document in your hand. You're going to have your book right beside you so you can be going over this. You're going to be one of studying your rankings. I'm going to give you some tools in the next session that you can use to automate some of this, but I still think a lot of this should be done manually, especially for the, the purpose of learning it. Because uh, if you can if you can really internalize and learn this information, uh, as it says, we're designing a plan for top rankings, and uh, it really does start with good on-page SEO, especially since the last Penguin update. So much more is so much more is important on our own pages than it's ever been. Is that uh, it's really important that we dig in and and put a plan together that makes sense for your site and your pages. Joan says, "Can we download the SEO workbook from the School of Internet Marketing?" Yes, it'll be on. It'll be on session number four directly below. It's not uploaded yet, but it'll be directly below the video. There will be a link to both the uh, SEO checklist and the on-page SEO workbook. So they're both they're both finished. I, they just got to be uploaded. My tech's got everything now, and uh, he's working on that. So by the very latest this time tomorrow, everything will be up. We actually last week. On a sidebar note, we finally got everything firing on all cylinders that all the videos, everything was finished and done within 24 hours of the live, live session uploaded into the school. So that's the goal for each session. So knock on wood, by tomorrow night, everything should be there for you as well. We've already reworked the, uh, the menu for the Daily Traffic Blueprint to accommodate all this. So uh, just keep an eye on there. Check in tomorrow night, and it should be all there for you. All right, so baby step number one, baby step number one is to pick a page on your website that you would like to see highly ranked. And depending on the type of business you are, it could be your home page. If you're, I would think if you're a local business and you've got a little automotive shop or a muffler shop or you're running, a, maybe you're an optometrist or you've got a restaurant, a pub, a coffee house, any local business that's looking to get highly ranked, more times than not, you've got a website that's probably five, six, eight, maybe 10, 12 pages, but the most important page in your particular case is your home page. So I would think in your case, it's going to be a home page. If you're an online marketer like many of us, like Carol is here with uh, the BioGrowHealth.com website, in her case, she's got a review here for a product that she would like to see highly ranked in the results. So she's already done a fair bit of work on this. And she's competing on a national basis, so the competition is way higher than a local market. But same strategies apply. 
Um, and, and again, on a sidebar note, that's a good thing to point out to you, those of you who are local, working on a local market. It's way easier to do a local market, to rank highly than it is for a national market. Uh, it's totally doable for the national market, but it just takes more work. But you want to identify that page uh, on your site. And again, I've got a little video tutorial for each one of these uh, baby steps, so I'm just going to kind of go through it. 30,000 foot view right now, but then as we get into the little tutorials for you on the site tomorrow, you'll be able to go through these with me with the booklet on a, on a baby step by baby step basis. When it comes to keyword phrases, this is a place where a lot of people get bogged down. People will send me a keyword list of 30,000 keyword pages. No kidding. I'll get the most incredible keyword research list that you've ever seen. Some of them will be a book. There's so many keywords in there. That's not what we need here. We need to go on a page-by-page -page basis. Think pages, not sites. doesn't mean we don't need to have an overall plan, but we still need to think pages. And I, I like to keep it simple when it comes to keyword phrases. And next week, when we get into the My SEO tool, you'll have lots of tools and automation and ways to measure and track and do anything you want with it. But it starts with understanding. So we want a real common sense approach to keywords. We want to keep it simple. So baby step number two is, with that in mind, is to identify my target keyword phrases. So in Carol's particular case, We'll use her as an example here. Uh, she's got the Omega Q Plus with re, uh, resveratrol. That's the product. So she would like to be ranked for those keyword phrases. So with just a little bit of keyword research, uh, mostly common sense, looking through the results to see what's ranking, we put together this little list. Omega Q Plus, that's the primary keyword phrase. That's her main keyword phrase. Uh, Omega Q Plus supplement, there was another one. Mega Q Plus uh, Resveratrol, uh, Mega Q Plus Reviews, Mega Q Plus Benefits, Mega Q Plus uh, Resveratrol's Reviews, and then and so on. So there's 10 of them. So I would recommend that you start off with 10 of them. And let me throw out a question to those of you in the room. If I was to ask you, which page on your site do you, do you want to promote? Would you know what that page is right now? I have a feeling instinctually most of you would already know what uh, what page you want to uh, you want to promote. Uh, Tony says yes. Uh, uh, Sergio's a yes. Jose's a yes. There's more yeses coming in. Uh, Bob, Robert, Alan, yes, yes, yes. John. So I can see most. In fact, I don't see a single no. And I would think in a lot of cases that's probably the case. Uh, Jose says the Google Keyword Tool is not active anymore. What? tool are we going to use? Let's leave that till the next session. In this particular case, I just want to use common sense. In fact, in a lot of cases, the only reason we want to use a keyword tool is really two reasons. One, to get the words we may not have thought about, like in this particular case, Omega Q plus ingredients. Maybe we didn't know that. Or Omega Q plus, that's the no-brainer. But then the word tablets on the end of it, maybe we didn't know that. So we want just let's just use some common sense in figuring this out uh, this week, uh, and we'll we'll get we'll share the tools with you next week. Things like benefits, reviews, does it work? And when you're doing Google searches, you'll see in the title tags all kinds of words coming up, so you can look to them for clues. The other reason that we want to use a keyword tool, in addition to being able to find these secondary keywords, is to figure out which keywords are the most searched, so we can sort them by the highest search phrases. To the lowest so we know where to prioritize our efforts when we get working on them. All right, so that's really the two reasons, to find the extra words that we're not thinking about and to find which keywords are searched most so we know where to, uh, to focus our efforts. But in this particular case, you just want to get a little wish list together. I would suggest 10 would be plenty to get started. When you're doing the search, you want to go incognito and you want to neutralize or neutralizing the uh, personalized search. If you happen to be logged into Google and you're searching just normally in the normal browser, remember Google's trying to personalize your search. It's memorizing what you're doing and it's trying to serve up the results for things that it thinks you're looking for. And if you happen to be visiting your page or your site a lot, 
Google thinks you're really interested in that site and they will serve it up higher in the results and more often to you and you'll get a false reading on your site. And I've broken a lot of hearts over the last few years since this came along because I'll get emails or calls say, hey, I'm highly ranked in the results. And then you go incognito and then you get the real results to where you really are. So to go incognito, just click on the little bars top right. I recommend using the Google Chrome browser. I do know uh, Firefox has one a similar feature as well, but uh, I use Chrome. So click on that little bar, you'll get a little drop down here. You click on New Incognito Window, and then when you see the little uh, spy, I guess, or non-spy over in the left-hand corner, you'll know that uh, you're now searching with the natural or personalized search turned off, and now you're getting the raw results. That's what you want to see. You just want to see the results as if you're surfing anonymously and you're finding stuff anonymously and they're not trying to criminalize your results. So make sure you're, you're heading in that direction. So then baby step number three is you move in to doing a, uh, to checking the rankings, on-page SEO checking the rankings of the page. Then we could take those 10 keyword phrases and we can just go through them one at a time and see where we're ranking in the uh, natural results. So in Carol's particular case, Omega Q Plus, uh, Resveratrol, she's number four. And she can start to get a feel of who her competition is here too. And she can see the uh, number one competitor in her particular case uh, happens to be Dr. Sinatra at the very top, who is also her merchant. And she outranks him in some cases. In some cases, uh, he outranks her. So we're working on moving this this page, not this site, but this page up highly in the results. I'm working on a few other pages simultaneously, but I'm using the exact same strategy that we're covering here. So you can see she's uh, nicely ranked, and we just want to document that. And in the, uh, in the workbook, you get a little form like this that you can just fill out. You can see we've got uh, the, all the keywords list, listed in the left. Current is us. Natural results, she's number seven for Omega Q+. And if we go back to the results, that's only 2 or 3% of the searches. If she's number five for Omega Q+, plus, uh, so if you, you take a look at the numbers that we shared with you in the pie chart and you look where she's currently ranking, if we can move these keyword phrases up from lower on the page, on page one, up into the positions one, two, and three, we can go from crumbs to 50% of the search volume that's coming through that particular page just by focusing on getting this page highly ranked. And you'll, you'll find that you're in exactly the same position that you, uh, even if you're not currently ranking at all and you just keep following along with what we're doing here, you will see relatively quickly, unless you're in a crazy competitive topic, uh, that you're going to see some rankings start to materialize uh, as you unfold this information and start to apply these strategies. Okay, so you can see there's the current. Baby step number eight, we're going we're gonna to circle back and we're going to take care of the competitor and see where he's ranking. Mega Q+, plus, he's, he's not ranking at all. And I only go up to the top ten results. If they're on page two, I don't even count them. So if we don't get any traffic from page two worth talking about. No point in documenting it. So he happened to be on page two for some of these. It doesn't matter to me. That's a zero. All right, so baby step number four uh, is the on-page SEO, which is the content. And we have been talking for a long time now about writing for the visitor first and not the search engine. And I think over the last few sessions, we've been adjusting that to write for the visitor and forget about the search engine. Like write for the visitor. Google's finally to the place that they can rank naturally written content. Does that mean we, we don't have to worry about keywords? No. We still need to make sure we're writing about a particular topic and there's still some good on-page opti optimization that we need to take care of and I'll walk you through that in the workbook to make sure every page is optimized properly. Uh, but really when 98% of your, your, your thinking should not be on the search engine, it should be what do I need to cover here for the visitor to get their attention and to make sure uh, that they're converting. So baby step number five, once we're happy with our content, we want to work on our title tag and our description meta tag. And sometimes we don't, we're not really sure where the title tag is. And in Carol's particular case, uh, we even wrote the original title tag, or one of our writers did, and I, and I did some work on it, which I'll show you in a moment. But you can see 
Uh, and that, that pie chart reflects it as well. Just because we're on page one doesn't mean they're going to click on our, our, our listing. We still got nine other competitors here potentially that we got to compete against. So we want to make sure that we have a great title tag. And the reason is we want a great title tag is because the title tag is what you see in the search results. That Omega Q Plus is pulled directly from Carol's title tag. So it's identical. That's where they get it from. And then directly below that is the description meta tag that's also pulled from, uh, from Carol's page as well. So we want to make sure where we're focused on creating a great title tag that's not only optimized for the search engines, but it's also optimized for the visitor. So in Carol's case, she's got Omega Q Plus with resveratrol. Okay, there's the keyword phrase. If you look up at Dr. Sinatra at the very top, Omega Q Plus with resveratrol supplements, so he's got an additional keyword phrase in there. Carol doesn't. Uh, she's got BioGirl Health by Carol Newman. So I figured, you know, we could tune this up a little bit. So what I did is in your workbook, you're going to have a page or have a page. You do have a page that looks like this. You've got the on-page SEO for the title tag. So take your current title tag, add it to the page. Go pick your, once you get your competitor picked, circle back and add the, uh, the title tag for your competitor here. You can see there's the two of them side by side, and then there's the one that I reworked down below, updated actually today for Carol. Didn't make huge changes. I like to stay within 64 characters, including spaces. And if you were to count that second title tag, and the first one too, they're both very close to 64 characters. In fact, the second one is 64 characters right on, and I think the, the one above is like 63. So I had to do a couple little things, but uh, my thinking here is the word with, Google just ignores that anyway. It's a stop where they don't, it's like the, at, and they just ignore it. So I just changed it to W with a little slash there. So Omega Q Plus with resveratrol supplements. So I added in the word supplements, and then I still got the word in review there. So review by Carol Newman. So, and I put a little date beside it so I can watch it. We may circle back and change it again. We may adjust it. But I think in the results, it's going to look better. It's not going to change the rankings because we still got the same keywords, Omega Q Plus as resveratrol. But it will help the, key, the keyword phrase supplements by adding it there. And I think it'll, if uh, somebody, if we can get Carol snuggled up next to Dr. Sinatra here, either uh, preferably above him, or even right below him, she's going to see a lot more traffic. And if somebody is looking for this particular product, then they happen to know Dr. Sinatra, who seems to be a pretty famous doctor, and they see Carol right below or right near him that says with a review of the product, then I think she's going to get a, a chance to get another click through. And because we've added another keyword phrase into the title, uh, she'll probably be able to rank for more of the words with uh, the word supplements in it. So in your particular case, and I'll take you through this on the video, same idea. You just want to have a good look at your title tag and make sure that uh, you've done a good job on that. Same with the, uh, the description meta tag. So if we look below the uh, actual headline or the actual title tag or the headline in the search results, you can see there's her description meta tag. It says, My Omega Q Plus Reviews Features an Anti-Aging Supplement. And then I just changed it a little bit. Uh, I added the word ingredients. So I, I, think, I thought she needed the word ingredients to be added. I did a little bit of research on that. And I just tuned that up a little bit. So same idea. Just be aware of those of those uh, of those two items. And in the on-page SEO checklist, uh, you'll get the tips on how to create a great title tag and what's included in it. And same with the description meta tag. Baby step number six: on-page SEO. Welcome to Penguin. Welcome back to this new world we now live in. Uh, Social engagement. Again, in the workbook, you'll find a page, on-page SEO, social engagement. Check the social engagement for both your page and your competitor's page. So in this particular case, I'm comparing Carol's page to Dr. Sinatra's page. And I was looking for pages that are similar in content. Both of them have a lot of words on the page, so I figured he would be a good competitor. He's already ranking highly for many keyword phrases, but he's got work to do. And we can out, we can outproduce them in some areas. In Carol's case, you can see she's got 21 likes, 21 shares, two tweets, 
and three Google Pluses. So I just added those into the document. Then I took a peek at the competitor. He's got zero shares, but he's got 92 likes. He's got zero pluses. He's got five tweets. He's got zero comments, but he's got 54 reviews. And that's an area that we need to do some work on with Carol's pages because she's got goose egg. We don't even have the ability on the page for anybody to leave a review. So uh, we're going to be sorting that out as well. So you can see, you scroll down the page in her particular case as well, she's got lots of comments coming in though. So she may not have the reviews, but total comments, she's sitting at 10 so far. And they're real comments. You can see if you get in and have a read of them, that she's got a good engagement here. And there's 10 of them in total. And when I count them, I'm counting her comment as well. So five people have actually commented on her page of which uh, she's commented back to every single one of them. So she's interacting nicely with them. All right, so social engagement is an area that we definitely want to be pouring into this document, uh, into the workbook. And then baby step number seven is on-page SEO uh, analytics. So what's this page doing uh, if, we, if we delve into her analytics? And for some reason, I don't know why, but her analytics got deleted off her website on August the 10th. Don't know how that could have happened to her, but something weird happened. Uh, but it's been added back in. So unfortunately, we've lost a couple of months worth of data there that we don't currently have. But uh, Scott uh, Bibbs, uh, this happened to you as well. We're using the same plugin that we use on this site. So I would recommend if any of you uh, haven't uh, checked your analytics lately, you may want to take a peek at it and just make sure that everything's firing there. So it's been corrected now, but uh, we lost a couple months worth of data. But in Carol's case, so there's still there's still almost a year's worth of data. So if we have a look at her pages here, you'll see that her bounce rate for this particular page, and we've drilled right down to this page. This isn't for her site. You can see she's had a total of 4,310 visits. Uh, her bounce rate is 87.10%. So that could use some work. Her time on the page, average uh, visit duration is 51 seconds. That could use some work. So there's definitely some work to be had here. And let, let me throw a, a little um, tip to you, those of you who are creating comments, sorry, who are creating content but are not getting comments. How many of you are adding contents to your page? And I'm talking to those of you who have a fair chunk of traffic. How many of you are getting visitors to your page but you're not getting comments, and you're, you're, you're developing content, but you're not getting comments at all. Let me just see how many of uh, those we're getting. Or maybe they're very few and far between. John says visitors, no comments. Uh, Karen says rare. Would always like more, says Tony. Yes, we would always like more. One of the things that I see work, uh, Michael says, lots of visitors, no comments. Okay, so one of the things that I would highly recommend, if you're writing an article, I'll bet you in most cases here, you're not asking for comments at the end. When you're out and around, I, I see some great examples of this online. Your last paragraph or two, when you're wrapping up that article and you're transitioning from the, you know, you're, you're, you're basically coming out of the article, put a little subheadline and a couple more paragraphs to follow it and ask for engagement, ask them their opinion, give them some things to think about, ask them to comment below. And if you just ask people, in a lot of cases, you're going to, some of you are going to be shaking your head at me, yeah, of course this will work, but just ask them, ask them to, you know, to comment. And I will go find a couple of great sites that I've seen recently where they're doing that, and uh, I just suggest modeling, or go find sites that you know are getting lots of comments, and you'll find, uh, even the articles that I've written over on Calm Love and stuff, right down at the very end, I, I make a strong pitch for them to, to leave a comment, to ask a question, to share their, their opinions, their advice, their experiences, their stories, whatever it happened to be writing about. Uh, and usually you ask, you're going to get a, a decent percentage that will start to engage. And I do notice that comments lead to more comments that lead to more comments that lead to more comments. So 
And it's, you know, once you start getting the comments coming in, it's really easy to double the comments. All you got to do is reply to each one. And so if you get 10 comments and you reply to all 10, now you get 20. And then you get kind of a crowd effect happening because more people see more. It's just like if you get more Facebook likes, you get more Facebook likes because everybody else is like, you know, I guess I might as well like it too. Same goes for, for comments. Okay, but balance rate. So all of this information is getting poured into the document so we can make a plan as to where we are, we're going to focus this information and how we're going to increase our traffic. Baby step number eight, the final baby step for this week, is to find a targeted competitor. Go find a competitor that you're going to compete against. Somebody you can put a target right on their back. I'm going after you. He doesn't know it. They don't need to know it. But it's nice to have a competitor to measure yourself against to see how you're doing as you, uh, as you work on dumping those rankings. And as long as you stick keep your nose clean and don't fall into any of the, the tricks or gimmicks or games or buying backlinks or article marketing, or article directories, article spinning, uh, all of the stuff that many of us have seen kill other people over the years. As long as you, you stay away from that, uh, this, should, this should pay you dividends for many, many, many years to come. Okay, so in this particular case, as we said, uh, we've got uh, the target picked. Dr. Sinatra happens to be her merchant. Uh, you'll notice that there's two pages there. There's the Omega Q Plus and there's the Omega Q Plus with resveratrol. You could pick either one of these to compete with because they're bouncing in and out of the results. They're very, they're very similar in their design. They're totally different content. But here's a good example of one, one website because he's covering the topic well on two pages. He actually has the top two results uh, doing that. But in this case, you could pick either one as a competitor. You can see uh, he's got a 4.6 rating with 54 reviews on both of those. And uh, the second one's a 4.4 with 54 reviews as well. All right, so go find yourself a competitor. Try to find somebody with a similar number of words on the page. Or if you've got a you know, big, long review, find that somebody else has got a review. Or at least a merchant who's got a shopping cart with lots of content on it. This is uh, the doctor's case, and you'll find if you were to scroll down here, it goes down uh, quite a ways, and there's lots of content on the page. So uh, he's a good target. All right, so social media setup. So once you have selected a target page, identified your target keywords, checked and adjusted your on-page SEO, including your content, title, and description meta tags, recorded the social engagement and analytics, and compared it against a select competitor, you are then ready for the next step. And as I said, next week we're going to be uh, working on the My SEO tool, which will do much of this for you automatically. But I would encourage you to go through this process because it's a real eye opener if you've never done this before. Even me, I've done this, I can't tell you how many times. I've probably done this hundreds of times. Every time I do this, I, I learn stuff and I, I just I discover little things and it makes you think about things. I mean, who would have thought? I, it never dawned on me until we've been working for local clients over the last number of months. James, you always talk about think pages, not sites. Here these guys are. They have all of these pages on, on Yelp, on Hub, on, uh, I'm going to say HubSpot. No, not HubSpot. On Yelp, on Yellow Pages, on Angie's List. I mean, they just go on and on and on. What if we were to focus a little bit of attention on those pages? really do a great job on the descriptions. Make sure we got some keywords in there that we got a really well-written descriptive text on Angela's, for example. We've got the phone number, the business name, the address, link to the website. Just fill in the form completely like we do everywhere else and just really claim that listing, make it ours so we now have control of it. Uh, if it gives us the ability to adjust the title tag or the file path, do so. If we can upload some photos or some images, let's do that. And then let's get in a couple really good backlinks and see what happens. And boom, lo and behold, up they come because these are not rinky-dink little websites. These are, these are the, some of the staples of the Internet. Yellow Pages, Yelp, Angie's List. I mean, there's literally dozens and dozens and dozens of these sites out there already that many people are already listed on. And if you're not listed on them, we'll show you how to get listed on them in a few upcoming sessions. Uh, and then you can start to see those pages ranking as well. So it's, it's pretty interesting if you start really thinking pages and not sites. So the homework is select the target page, identify your target keywords, and again, I'm going to walk through you each one of these uh, baby steps in a short little video. 
you're going to have a look at your rankings, have a look at your content, we're going to take a good look at the title tag and the description meta tag, and we're going to count the social engagement, see what's going on there. We're going to have a look at the analytics, and we're going to identify a, a target competitor, and then we're just going to fill up this workbook with the information that we need to make some educated decisions and a plan on how we're going to compete against uh, the other sites that already have these rankings if you were just getting started or how we're going to compete better if we're already in the results such as Carol uh, we want to see our rankings grow and our traffic increase because I think everybody would would agree that if Carol is sitting at, on page one for many of her keyword phrases and we looked at the numbers and she's down around the three four five percentile percent mark of the total click-throughs on the page and we can move her up to page uh, to the top of the page and maybe take over a few positions instead of just one that we could at least increase her traffic by five or tenfold if we do a real good job and she's already making good sales on that page we're going to reduce the bounce rate sitting at 87 percent we'll talk about some ideas on how to do that uh, and on all that as we go but this week let's really work on getting our on-page SEO not only thoroughly understood but actually get the workbook completed and get the adjustments made and then uh, you can rest assured that you've got that page or pages if you happen to be working on multiple ones uh, all ready to roll the workbook by the way and I should point out is really only for one page so if you're going to do more than one page print yourself a couple of workbooks uh, not just one. You're gonna you're gonna need one more, one of those little workbooks for every page you're working on on your site. And again, if you're if you're new to this, you may want to start off with just one or maybe two maximum. If you're a veteran, been around a while, and you want to dig into multiple pages, of course, you know what you're up against. So, I think you'll just find that little booklet uh, helpful. All right. So Tony says, where does the star rating on Dr. Sinatra's uh, cert? come from that's a good question those are called rich snippets and it's something that uh, we're going to be adding to Carol's site and I'm going to be putting a little video tutorial on exactly how to do that relatively new uh, but that's where they come from you, you'll notice in the results there's many other little tags and items starting to show up those are all pulled directly from the page so this really falls under on page SEO and uh, those are called rich snippets and you can have you can have star ratings you can have additional information you can have all kinds of stuff if you know how to set them up and there's some great WordPress plugins that are available for those of you using WordPress if you happen to be using Joomla or Drupal I'm sure you've got plugins or modules as they call them that will do something similar uh, if you happen to be if you keep hearing me say WordPress and you don't own a WordPress based website you may want to fall back on your webmaster for some of this uh, or you may want to consider upgrading your site to WordPress which is by far the, uh, the industry leader for so much of this now as far as plugins and the ability to add additional functionality to a site easily really does make uh, a big difference. Joan says uh, if we are to write for the visitor how do we know who the visitor is how do we identify them Ah, good question. Very good question. And we always put together a visitor profile for a particular website where we identify exactly who we think the perfect visitor is. So it's one of the steps that we do when we're developing a site, uh, which I know we're doing for you. And so you really want to focus on who that ideal visitor is. And I usually, usually use Arlene as an example with epilepsymoms.com. Uh, in her particular case, she was creating a website for moms based on her personal experience with Adam, and the whole topic was around uh, a mom helping her, her, her child, and realized that Arlene, if she didn't own the site, and she was out there searching around looking for information, she would actually be the absolute perfect visitor to land on that site. So we put a whole little profile together for Arlene, and so every time we were wrote an article or developed a podcast or do anything with that site we're writing to that that person that exact type of person and uh, that's how you do it so visitor profile and you'll get that with uh, when we deliver the site but very good question and everybody should have a visitor profile you should know exactly who you, you're writing to if you're trying to market one product to two different people you'll fail you need to you need to isolate who your perfect 
prospect is and write everything and create everything for them. Jose says, uh, something that I would like to understand with this course is when to stop targeting one page. My last efforts to get top rankings with Google failed because I never measured that, and I don't want to do a huge amount of work on one page when it is time to move on. I think that this has been my greatest mistake as an affiliate, and I still don't know uh, when I feel... Okay, so... Well, okay, let me just finish this. And I still don't feel I know when was the best time to stop building links and work on a page or another page. Good question, very good question. And one thing I th you may not have noticed, we're already into session number four, the end of session number four of the Daily Traffic Blueprint. And I have not even mentioned the word backlinks yet. I don't know if you've noticed that, but backlinks are, are they're still important. They're still important, but they're, we don't need nearly as many of them as we did in the past. So what your, your other page that you're mentioning, unless you've got a penalty on it, which you may have, but I doubt it, and you will, you will know this in your Webmaster Tools. If Google's penalized you for something, just log into your Google Webmaster Tools, make sure that's set up, and they will have sent you an email that you've done this or that, and they, weren't, you know, and they want it cleaned up, and then they will re, uh, you know, index the page. But there's this other information that we're going through now. Since Penguin, all of the social, social, in fact, there's, there's a few guys out there, uh, you know, they don't know for sure, only Google would know for sure, but it, it looks like Facebook likes could possibly be on par with, uh, with Google, with, with, with backlinks in a lot of cases. So I would just, uh, I'd have a look at it. You may want to post it in the site. Uh, I don't think we should ever only be just working on one page uh, too far. I mean, if we, if we, how do I say it? back backlinks, even back then, just backlinks, backlinks, backlinks is only in that case, a big piece of the puzzle, but there's still a few other things you got to make sure of today though, you can overdo your backlinks. You don't want to overdo your backlinks and you'd have to look at things like the number of times you've used the same anchor text phrase, number of times you've used perfect anchor text phrase, even though it's uh, maybe slightly different in each article what else do you have going on? Do you have no social going on? Do you have no other conversation going on about your pages out on the internet? Is it all the links just coming from guest blogs? And as we get into the content plan, and we, I think you're going to see how this is going to unfold. Uh, but I'd be interested in having a look at, uh, if you were to post that in the chat form, we, we should continue this conversation because it's important that we have a good plan in place for you. What about the example for a sports website page? I mean, instead of a product. So could you, could, as far as which page that we should promote, is that what you're asking, Scott? And I've actually been thinking about your site as we've been going through Thanksgiving over the weekend here. Okay, so I, I think in your particular case, what I would be doing is what we discussed last week. So Scott's got a website called is well, that's called it's it is all about sports.com. So it is all about sports.com. And in his particular case, he's reporting on all of the local major sports teams. So NHL, NFL, NBA, Major League Ball, and then some of the college teams. And because of the very nature of, of sports, the game's coming, the game is being played, the game is over, and then you move on. So you may write a, a piece of content about any one of those three parts of it or all three. So, But the content only has a short shelf life. So Scott's question is, what about a product for that site? So what we talked about last week was putting, Scott and I, is, is putting some pages together for the particular teams because you've got all of those teams. I think there's about... 10 or 12 of them in total, if I recall, uh, and have a landing page or a page for every one of the teams. So I'd start off with a few because you're not in a national market per se. You're in more of a regional market being just the state. So your competition is not going to be, um, you know, like uh, Carol's where you've got an entire continent to compete with. You're competing with the other sites that are 
interested in, and focused on the Florida sports team. So I'd put together a page. I'd pick maybe the top two or three teams that are currently engaged. So baseball's coming to an end, so I, I probably wouldn't be focused on that. But NFL football's kicked off, so probably the Dolphins. Uh, I'm starting to get to know all the sports teams over there. You've got the, both of the NHL teams, which are the Panthers and the – was the other one I don't recall but I would pick the two or three biggest teams you've got right now maybe the, the top two doesn't mean you can't get the other pages built out but focus on those teams and then get a page built for them as we discussed then we can because you're dealing with uh, the merchants uh, the, the the actual official team stores for those sports then you could focus on jerseys and and that type of thing. So your on-page SEO for those pages would be making sure you're included, you know, ball caps, jerseys, gloves, whatever, whatever the, the actual products are on that particular page. That's one thing that I would do. And then the other thing that we talked about, which I would still do, is for the, the, the major players for each team, I would put together a, a, a page profile for them or a page about each of them for those people who are looking to buy. They're, lo they're interested in the player, so the, the page is about the player, but they can also buy their jerseys and the various things that they offer around that particular player on the page as well. So I'm pretty sure that would do very well. And then the podcast with Miami Mike and are referring people to those pages. And you just get start mentioning them, talking about them. Uh, Miami Heat was there. You go, Miami Heat. So... That's, that's what I do. I, I'd get those pages organized, but but I'd really come up with a format for them. I'd figure out what this page looks like, and I'd come up with a templating a template for it. So then when I created the next sports team, I got cookie cutter, cookie cutter, cookie cutter, cookie cutter. So they're all laid out in the same way, uh, and same with the players. And then I would work on adding the uh, the merchants to those down at the bottom. Good call to action for comments, lots of social media. The thing about sports, guys, uh, and I think in your particular case, your one of the things you, you need to talk to your writer about is at the end of these articles, he needs to get a good, strong, solid call to action to leave some comments and to engage them and talk and, uh, you know, start posting. I, I was looking at the articles. They're great. He, you're right. He does a great job on the articles, but it's missing that piece. You need to ask the people to, to leave their comments. And same with Miami Mike. He should, be, he should be really hammering on that as well. He could be asking, what do you think? Post below. Want to hear from you and come up with a whole little thing for him to uh, to do that. All right. Okay. So I don't see any other questions. We're coming up to a little bit of, over time, anyway. So uh, all of this uh, information should be on the site for you guys tomorrow night. This video from tonight and all of these extra videos uh, that we've been including in each lesson that should be there, and the two workbooks as well. So keep an eye open for those. Uh, let's really focus on getting this on-page SEO nailed down and finished, and then you can put a bow on it and get the workbook uh, in your hands so you know later on, two, three, four months from now, six months, a year from now, when you want to go back and revisit the page, that you have a document and documentation as to what you did and why. You'll notice in the workbooks there's big areas for you to write your notes and stuff because one of the things that's easy to do later on is undo what you did originally when you really had, were into thinking about it. So uh, put the workbook to good use. All right, everyone, so if you have any questions during the week, by all means uh, pop into the uh, private Facebook group or onto the chat forum. Uh, enjoy your week. Enjoy your uh, weekend uh, coming up. And uh, we'll see everybody in the uh, chat forum on the Facebook group or next week. Thanks all. Bye for now.